journalist Simba Chikans of Telephone's Zambian government spokesperson to the President Edgar Lungu over the deployment of the Zambian army by the PF government during the counting of the ballot votes. President Lungu's spokesperson's name is Mr. Isaac Chipimp, in the telephone discussion below. South Carolina is Simba Chikanza and Ick is Isaac Chipimp. The telephone rings. The conversation begins, South Carolina. My name is Simba Chikanza, sir. I am a journalist for Zimai Media calling from the UK. Just a quick question, sir. How are you going to convince the world that you are deploying an army against the opposition party? Simba did not finish his question. Ick, who is calling? South Carolina. I am Simba Chikansa from Zima UK sir. Just a quick question sir. How are you going to convince the world that you are deploying an army against the opposition party during the election period? Do you realize you are committing a crime? This is against the constitution of Zambia. You have committed an extrajudiciary crime against the constitution of Zambia. Do you realize that you are criminally setting an army against an opposition party outside the law, outside the constitution of Zambia? Dotic, where is that coming from? South Carolina. You made an announcement, sir, but this is a crime against the constitution to deploy army during the counting of the elections. The president is conflicted because in these elections, he is an interested party equally. Ick, I hope you are an African. Are from Swaziland, South Carolina. No, sir. I come from Zimbabwe, but I have a Zambia blood. Ick, well you are not very far from Zambia, if you were from Zimbabwe. I am surprised that you can ask me such a question. I am surprised you accuse our president of deploying the army to quell the mayhem the opposition party is committing in the country. Let me put it this way, I am commenting on a personal level and not a spokesperson for the president. The army had to be deployed by the president to protect its citizens from the criminal opposition party violence. Are you sure you are saying the president should not protect the people of Zambia from criminal acts of the opposition party? In northwestern provinces there were inter-party violent clashes that led to some of our party members murdered by UPND party members, criminal syndicates. It is for this reason the president had to call the army to protect its citizens from criminals. If you are from Zimbabwe, I am surprised you can ask me such a question. Dear readers, these are the first scatter shots I could pick from the telephone discussion, but enough to generate my personal assessment. Firstly, it is worth of note to congratulate Mr. Isaac Chipimp for remaining calm, and he stuck to his true African values. Mr. Chipimp asked once more if Simba is an African, because there is no Africanness in his journalism. What crimes are committed by sitting African governments in the African continent? Is Simba trying to poke fun at the Edgar Lungu administration for withholding African values in the scheme of things, and he spins it in the media to mean President Lungu committed crimes by deploying the army right in the middle of the election period? It is wholly surprising to realize a journalist who purports to have Zambian blood in him would ask questions wholly un African in nature. Whiteness today is no longer the color of the skin of Caucasian origin, but about what these young Africans scattered around the world have internalized in their search for education. Western democracy is fed on them together with ice cream becoming addictive in their communications and expressions. The value systems of Western countries receiving our young people from the African continent demand them to be investigative and analytical in disseminating information related to democratic values. Constitutions used by most African governments were left accidentally by colonial masters hurriedly leaving the colonies, leaving behind constitutions that enshrined partial democracy as standard practice and norm of governance. If anything, revised constitutions are crafted to give a semblance of global democracy in a global village whose measure of governance is democratic values. For this reason, we have African countries that call themselves DRC or Democratic Republic of Congo. Is their democracy practiced in DRC is wholly questionable. It escaped Simba Chikansa completely that there are two laws in African settings, the ones that colonialists left and the unwritten African ones that are practiced by most governments across the continent. Citing the Constitution of Zambia to argue the deployment of the army as a crime against the Constitution should never be taken seriously by those who are versed with the going-ons in Africa. Mr. Chipimp should excuse Simba Chikanza unreservedly for many reasons. Simba is a UK-based journalist, a fact he made it clear right from the start of the telephone call to the Right Honorable Isaac Chipimp, spokesperson to the President.
If the opposition criminally commits acts of violence, they will feel the arm of the law. But it is not the case. If Lungu supporters do the same, criminality is a one-way street. In the eyes of African ruling governments criminals are opposition parties, never the other way round. We have an example of President Nangagwa who was hell-bent to declare advocate Chimisa a criminal. This was going to make it possible to arrest him and lock him up and be released when the coming elections of 2023 are done and dusted. There is nothing amiss about this kind of practice in African government settings like SANU-PF. These are standard practices across the continent of Africa. In Africa opposition is synonymous to criminality, factually means zero tolerance to anyone with a different opinion than that of the rulers of the nation. This is however not exclusively ZANU-PF that criminalizes dissenting voices, political parties that are currently opposing ZANU-PF have zero tolerance to opposing voices equally. We have a Mthwakazi party that is threatening its Ndebel citizens by winning Mandela necklace assassination, by burning them alive, petrol doused them, and set them alight for opposing the views of Mthwakazi cause. This is very African, not far from ZANU-PF mentality of dealing with the imminent opposition. Before we can conclude this article let's go back to Simba Chikansa once more and ask him pertinent questions. Did he phone President Ramaphosa? when he unleashed the SADF army to deal with hungry looting citizens of South Africa? If he did not phone, let us know why he chose to phone Zambia exclusively? What is good for the goose is good for the gander. In retrospect President Lunger was following a precedence that South Africa set not even a month ago. As we speak today, the SADF army is deployed, loitering around the streets of South African towns and cities. We have said it before that the upheavals that took place in South Africa had very little to do with Zuma incarceration, but about poverty and destitution in black African communities. Most of the populations that are poor however gave the ruling Anka hard lesson they will never recover from these social, political, and economic fires that have started. In any drama there is a villain. Yes, the opposition was vilified by the Lungu administration to the point of being labeled criminals. Lungu had threatened that, when he wins elections for the third time, he will arrest Hichilema and charge him of treason. Lungu's party had the mighty army on its side, but lost the elections dismally all the same. Hakane Hichilema got a sounding victory that is giving the continent of Africa sleepless nights. This act Zambia has given to the continent will have a ping pong effect in other African countries too. There are signs too that Hichilema's administration will ameliorate the social, political, an economic situation in Zambia for the betterment of common man. SADC is in the process of redefining and renewing itself. These regional fires are signs of the times. Politics will not deliver what the regional populations demand, but technocratic administrations will be the game in town. President Hichilema should find different ways of renewing societies for the betterment of the poor populations. However, he has no illusion about bankruptcy of the treasury he has inherited, but will be a great challenge to fulfill those hopes and expectations he was elected to fulfill in his first tenure of administration. We should never be amazed by Simba Chikansa's journalism. Our younger generation are daringly redefining governments they want to see. We have failed our children. Younger people are saying enough of liberation etiquettes that have no value adding to common people. That daring journalism of Simba Chikansa exemplifies the instrument of a revolution. The power of the media cannot be neglected anymore. Social media together with political activism are game changers globally. Even in the so-called first world countries, they are forces who are fighting neoliberalism in their government settings. The power of the social media and political activism are active on the ground. They demand change from globalist economies neoliberal policies to pro-poor and climate change sensitive governance. Journalist Simba Chikansa is immersed in global political shift in the UK and in other Western democracies. There are more than one dimensions in which Chikansa's journalistic approach can be put into perspective. In the backdrop of what transpired immediately after the 2018 general election counting in Zimbabwe, the opposition members staged a demonstration demanding the release of election results that extended the time release of the election outcome. Six people were gunned down by the army that was freely loitering in the streets deployed by the military government of ZANU-PF. 
Chikans I was genuinely concerned about what could be a repeat in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, San UPF government carelessly deployed ZDF army guys to quell a demonstration. We cannot continue to be bamboozled by African leaders, deceiving us to be proud about Africa and Africanness. We are made to shout semi-literate slogans exalting Africa. We have realized that this Africanness and its implementation is the prerogative of a few elite and their families. They continue to insist that we adhere to African values some of which are criminal to the very populations they purport to protect and rule them. About 90% of the populations in Africa are under duress. The younger populations are fed up of being spoon-fed with Africanness, values that neither gives nor guaranteed bread and butter on their tables. To hell with Africanness. To hell with truth and reconciliation in South Africa. Be it investigative journalism or political activism, these trades are rude, they are insolent rightly so. We must be daringly rude if we seek revolutionary changes in the SADC region. The so-called African values are sold to us so that the ruling elite can whine and dine on our behalf. The younger generation of Simba Chikanza and Hopewell Chinono are now saying enough is enough. The political, economic, and social fires burning in the SADC region are prophecies of what is to come soon. I pity those living in the bubble, they do not see what is coming.